Hey, I'm Tori. Welcome to Omega Ready and part four of our series on how to raise egg laying chickens. Our last video had us welcoming our new chicks into the brooder where we can give them a, a place to stay warm, dry, safe, and satiated. Today, we're going to be talking about things you can expect as the weeks go by, like how they grow and their behavior change over time. We will also discuss improvements to the brooder environment, which will promote their development and general well-being. So, with that said, let's get to it. As your chicks grow, they grow fast. They will go from the small little puff stage to getting larger and feathering out. They should be fully feathered out at around the six week mark. You will notice their new feathers as they will be stretching and flapping their wings and even flying around a little bit because they are chock full of energy, full of mischief as well, and they're trying to figure out how to use all that equipment they got. So let's touch on flying for a second. Chickens can't really fly. They will flap their wings and get a few feet off the ground and go short distances, but they don't really fly like wild birds can. You will see them working their wings out though, since they are an integral part of being a chicken, because it helps them keep balance, get up off the ground to roost or reach a laying box, and it's even part of how they defend themselves, but they're not exactly airworthy creatures. So this would be a good spot to talk about perching or roosting. Chickens don't always want to be on the ground. They want to roost up in a tree where they can monitor their environment in relative safety. They also prefer to sleep off the ground, which is smart because I'm pretty sure that everything likes to eat chicken. Chicks need some time to practice roosting before they need to depend on it for their safety. So it would be an excellent idea to provide your chicks with some perches to give them the chance to start developing the needed skills. Additionally, this can be a cheap source of entertainment and help chicks stave off boredom in the brooder. So a perch is simply a ladder type structure with rungs small enough to allow the chickens to clasp onto and balance. The material you use for your perch should be wood. Don't use metal or plastic because it's generally too slippery to get a good grip on. The rungs can be as simple as branches from a tree to dowel rods that you would purchase from a hardware store or a box store. Um, I've even seen furring strips used successfully. So all of these things can be used to make a successful perch. The dimensions I'm about to give you are for full grown birds. So you don't have to make any major changes to the perch once your chicks grow into adults. So that said, we will review a few ideas that you could do to help transition from chicks to adults in a moment. A good rule of thumb is to use a rung that is about two inches in diameter for large or standard breed chickens and about one inch diameter for bantams. The two inch diameter will be a bit big for the chicks at the moment, but that's okay because they won't be sleeping on the perch just yet. They're just going to be jumping around and working out their balance and stuff. By the time they are ready to sleep off the ground and on the perch, they'll have grown enough to make it work. The spacing requirement for your perch should allow for about eight inches of space per bird. So that's side to side, uh, with the rungs being spaced anywhere from about 12 to eight, 18 inches apart and 18 inches from any wall that it would be uh, close to. Having the first rung anywhere from 18 to 24 inches off the ground is just about right. For chicks, I'll use a small diameter branch that I can place pretty low to the ground so they don't need to jump as high. But some, some of the chicks won't care about that and they'll fly up to the upper rungs anyways because they, they do what they want and that, that's fine. So you just need to provide them the perch and they will figure out the rest on their own. So let's talk about their behavior for a moment. I'm sure you've noticed that your chicks are pretty spunky when they're actually awake. They like to randomly book it across the brooder while jumping and flapping their wings. Uh, one thing they're also doing that you might not have witnessed yet is establishing something called a pecking order. So the pecking order is the chicken's way of determining who within the flock gets the best stuff. And from a chicken's perspective, the best stuff means first access to food or water, who gets the best real estate near the top of the perch, and from a rooster's perspective, who gets to mate with the hens? All chickens live within the confines of the pecking order. It's the way nature chose to establish leadership within the flock. More aggressive chickens are rewarded with a higher rank and more timid chickens with a lower rank. So how do they go about establishing this order? 
So when they're young, it's usually just a show of, of skill and mostly attitude. Chicks will approach each other, sometimes running up to each other, somewhat aggressively looking. They'll extend their neck and their feathers on their neck and stretch out tall, making themselves appear larger than they really are. They will stare each other down and one chick will usually lose confidence and stop or walk away from the challenge at that point, choosing to accept that they are not mightier than their opponent. If they do progress past the stare down stage, they enter into the unofficial hullabaloo stage. Then things are about to get a little bit dicey. They may try to beak smash their opponent either on the ground or while jumping in the air. Uh, the beak smash smash is just an aggressive peck at the other bird's head or for face area. 99% of the time this will end the pecking order ordeal with one chick submitting to the other with no further bluster. The whole process can be over in just a few seconds with anything beyond that being somewhat unusual. Now, when roosters hit maturity, they may tussle a bit more and for a lot longer. But in general, it won't be very often. If you encounter this event, just, just stay out of the way and let them sort it out. It's all completely normal. All right, so some other things to watch out for is your chicks are nearing six weeks old. So as we discussed earlier, they have all their feathers now and are old enough to start hardening off the heat lamp. If you're still using your heat lamp at six weeks, it's time to put it away soon. However, I will say that given your location in the world and the time of year, like spring or, or winter or fall, you may want to watch the weather closely before you just take the thing out. I was planning on removing ours the other day, but we had a cold snap come in and we were seeing low teens overnight, so I decided to leave it in, just play it safe, right? What's the harm? Um, but as soon as that cold snap passed, took the heat lamp out of there. So as they get bigger, they're also going to need more space. They need more personal space. They need more space to roam and run, more space to eat and drink. All the space requirements based on age are down below in the details. Also, the food and water dispenser should be getting higher up uh, off the ground. A good general rule of thumb is they should be eating, you know, generally parallel with the ground, if not a little bit um, above 90 degrees uh, from the ground. So you don't want to make them bend down too far to get the food or water. One last item on roosters. Uh, to be technically accurate, an immature rooster is called a cockerel. As your chicks are approaching six weeks old and your flock has cockerels in it, you can expect to start hearing some strange noises coming out of the brooder of the coop. So I'm sure we're all aware what a rooster's crow sounds like coming from a mature rooster. But like everything in nature, things take time to develop. A cockerel's first attempt at crowing sounds like an angry cat hissing through a oogle horn. Their pitch is off, their control is non-existent, and their volume is pretty weak. Uh, but they're going to practice and they're going to get better at it. But just remember one thing. If you laugh too hard at their attempts at crowing, no matter how awkward it is, you may damage that young rooster's mojo. And take it from me, they may remember this perceived slight and give you a spur in the back when you're not paying attention some point down the road. Okay, so a few general things before we wrap things up here. Keep their environment clean so as to prevent any issues with disease or poor general health. That bedding should be replaced on the regular. Bigger chip chicks mean bigger poops, so you may be replacing it more often. Food and water dispensers also need to stay clean and full at all times. Stay true to the space requirements. Your growing chicks need room to roam and have run and have some fun. Having too little space can result in high stress and bad behaviors that you may not be able to break. As you have seen in some of the footage here today, they like to run and they need space to do so. So you do your best to give them more room so that they can have some fun with it. So our next video is going to cover the transition from out of the brooder and into the coop. We're going to review outdoor fencing requirements, changes to feed, and the finer aspects of a good coop. I plan on walking you through my coop layout so you can see how we do things around here, whether you use it or not, whatever, we'll show you how we do it. So. Take a moment, like, and subscribe to the video if you'd be so kind. Otherwise, thanks for spending the time with us, and uh, we'll catch you on the next video release.